What's happening everybody? This is kind of part two of creating a modal. This video is going to focus on how to create a form that goes inside of that modal and how to style it nicely using Tailwind. So be sure to check out the previous video, which is how to create a modal and how to make it pop up when you click a button. Surprisingly simple with React Bootstrap, we didn't have to do anything from scratch. So now let's get into creating that form. So I'm gonna cheat and actually use code that already exists out there on the Tailwind website, which will already be pretty well styled, and we can just put it inside of this modal. So for form styling, I just looked up forms in Tailwind CSS and found an article to some examples for forms, as well as a plugin you can use. So let's take a look at this one here. This is what we're going to use. It gives some pretty good examples. However, if you want to get really detailed with forms, you can check out the forms plugin, which will give you uh, other capabilities that I'm unfamiliar with. So check it out if interested, but basically we're going to go off of this example, which I like, but we're not gonna take everything because we don't need this checkbox. Probably not gonna end up needing this button either. So basically we just need the full name and then we need the role, which I don't want it to be a password. So we're basically going to go just off of this full name and copy it twice, changing it to role. So the first thing, we're going to get this surrounding div here and that first input as well. We will skip the next div, which has the password, and then we will skip the next div, which is the newsletter checkbox, and then we could take the button just to go through some other examples. So let's go ahead and first copy this part at the top, and then we'll go here afterwards and copy this at the bottom. So going back to our code, this is going to go inside of edit employee inside of the modal body. So before we go ahead and paste everything, let's go ahead and just update some of this information. So this will be update employee and this understood will be something like update, save that and that should be good. Now we can go into the body and paste our form Gonna need to do a little bit of formatting here, so I'll tab this over. We'll need to do a few things. We'll need to change class to class name, and we'll need to add an end slash to the input. So let's go back. This time we will grab the ending, so everything from here to the bottom, and we'll paste that after this div. And then, same thing here, we'll just try to clean it up a little bit, and it should look something like this. Great, now let's go ahead and fix that error with the input. We will put a slash here, change the ID to just name for simplicity's sake, and that will allow us to change the label as well. So instead of associating the label with inline full name, we will associate it with just name. Now we'll save, it formats a little bit. Next thing we wanna do is replace class with class name, so you can hit this drop down, and we want it to be class name, like so. And you can go through each one of these, which will just, you can make sure you're doing the right thing, or you can just do replace all if you're pretty confident, which I didn't want to do that one because it already has class name. So we can skip that one. All right, there we go. So at this point, everything should have class name, which is the right way to do it in React. Last thing we want to do is we want to take this input for the full name and copy that so we can have an input for the role. So that's this div right here. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste that right below. Then we just got to change a few things. So the four is going to be role. The text is going to be role. And then the ID to associate the label to is going to be roll. All right, let's check it out. Let's make sure we're not totally off when it comes to the styling. So we can go in here, hit update on any of these, and hot dang, look at that. That looks pretty sexy. Although it's a little strange, we have two buttons here and it has Jane Doe twice. So here's what we wanna do. We need to decide what button we're going to use. Do you like the button here? Or do you like the button down here? Well, personally, I like the button down here. It just makes sense. But the sign up button is within that form. So you're gonna have to do some kind of a rearranging. If you want to use this button for this form, it's a little harder to submit, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. But in other words, this sign up button, you can see that 
it's down here and a button inside of the form will automatically submit the form. So there's lots of ways around this. I'm going to show you one. So basically what we're going to do is we're just going to drop this button all together. Get rid of that. Save. Looks a little bit better now. And for this other button, well, on a typical HTML button, there is the form attribute that you can associate a button with a form. This button with a capital B versus a lowercase b, I'm not entirely sure if the bootstrap button has this ability or not. So basically what we're going to do is we're gonna say button form and set this equal to the ID of our form. So we can scroll up, find form, give it an ID, and we'll just say edit modal, scroll back down, and assign that here. And then we will close the button and then provide the value we want to be displayed here as update. So take a look at it now. We have this new update button, but it looks like trash, but you can see that the page is refreshed. And that's the easiest way to submit a form with a button. So if you guys know how to do the equivalent with the button with a capital B bootstrap button, then by all means go for it. Drop a comment how you do it. But for me, all I'm gonna do is add some classes into this button to make it look like not a piece of trash. So we'll say class name and assign a few tailwind classes. And then we'll just remove this button altogether. So what classes are we going to apply? We will just copy one of these button examples from the tailwind docs. This one looks fabulous. So let's go ahead and copy these classes here. Paste that right here. Save. Let's take a look at what it looks like. So we'll hit update. And overall, not too bad. And the button is now associated with that form. And we're not using the bootstrap button. If you want to keep things consistent here, like with the sizing of the buttons, we could just do the same exact thing for the other button. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these lines here. And this one we're going to change to close, get rid of the form button and replace it with on click. And this is going to be handle close, get rid of this original button, save. And now you can see we have two buttons and now we can just change the color of the close button. So let's go back here. You can look up what classes you can use for these. So we'll go ahead and just search background on the Tailwind site color. And here are some different options. So maybe we'll go with like a gray here. So we'll go BG slate 400 right here. And let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. And we could talk about what color we want it to be on hover. As you can see, our coloring is a little bit different throughout our site. So you can see that this button is actually using background purple 600. So we could do the same thing for our button over here. So background purple 600. And you can just slightly change the color when it's on hover. So purple 700. Let's take a look what that looks like. So we'll hit update. And now we have a purple button. It's slightly darker when we hover over it. We can do the same thing for close. So we'll just put background slate of say 500. Save. And now it's looking pretty good. At this point, we are making good progress, but if you've been following along, you may have noticed there are some errors in the console and the data in the form doesn't actually show the data for the employee. It just has a hard coded value. So let's first take a look at that error. You can see this error here. You provided a value prop to a form field without an on change handler. This will render a read only field. If the field should be mutable, use default change. Otherwise set either on change or read only. So you can see we can't type in this box. So what we're gonna do in the next video is we're gonna talk about what that means, how to fix it, and how to send data from the actual employee to the form to show the default values there. So stay tuned for that video, looking forward to it, and be sure to subscribe.